Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's review is the second co-production review with my fellow YouTube pen reviewer extraordinaire Alan Light of What I Ink. We collaborated on a review of the improved version of the Pen BBS 355 a while ago. It was a lot of fun and many of you seemed to enjoy it so we decided to do it again. This time with the new model of the Pen BBS 487 magnetic piston filler. We decided combining our full reviews and our joint conference video made for a really long video. So this time we'll each post our own reviews, which will include our joint video discussion and a link to the other's video in the description. We both purchased the same acrylic, one that I love, the Galaxy Blue. Alan received his first about three weeks ago. I received mine just last week and I've been writing with it for the last few days and working with it, comparing it to its evolutionary ancestor, the 492. That was the Year of the Rat limited edition. And playing with the filling system. There are some interesting differences between the 487 and the 492, and let's take a look at those right now. <music> First thing I did after unboxing this pen was to put my digital calipers on it and look for differences with the 492. They are pretty much identical. When Alan and I were discussing the improved 355, we also speculated on what the newly announced magnetic piston filler 487 model would look like. I will remind my viewers what your intrepid fountain pen reporter said back then. So. But my thinking is they made this limited edition. 492 yeah. with all this change in hardware and all this the, right. the cap is a completely different shape from any other pen bbs right. pen they've got all this machinery already ready to to make a pen all they have to right. do is change the hardware and make right. this a production version and call it the 487 I think we're going to see that this is the pen this is the 487 if you take all the year of the rat uh, emblems off. You see, not only handsome, but clever too. This pen is almost exactly what I expected. I figured PenBBS already had the tooling set up for cap, barrel, section, and parts of the magnetic piston. So all they had to do was change the hardware and make their usually array of beautiful acrylics to go along with it and they'd have a new production model. That's pretty much what they did with this pen. The only thing different from my speculation is they jettisoned the cap band altogether and replaced it with a heat stamp on the back of the cap. Very clever. And I actually like the sleeker look of the 487 compared to the 492. But let's look at the details. The Galaxy finish is really stunning and is becoming my favorite acrylic, even over my beloved Amber as a cat. I've even got Amber pans with blue ink in them. I know, that's sacrilege. From the top, we see a flat finial, which has nicely rounded edges and which houses the first magnet. The cap is dead straight to the end, which is also nicely rounded here. These are excellent touches, by the way. These little details are what you'd expect from a pen twice this price. We have the typical pen BBS sword clip. Not only is this clip stylish, it's very functional. The back of the cap has the aforementioned heat stamp on it with the model number 487, 2005, and pen BBS, Shanghai, China. And it's surrounded by a curly border. It's a nicely subtle design choice here. From a culture that loves gaudy and ornate, it's nice to see a uh, company's designers have the ability to design with subtle elegance. There's an almost non-existent step down because of that nice curve to the barrel. And you can see that the end of the barrel is also curved or rounded so that when those pieces meet, it's almost non-existent and the barrel tapers down about two millimeters to the bottom flat finial which has a metal chrome metal plug insert 
with the model number 487 Shanghai and Penn BBS etched into it. The bottom finial is also nicely rounded. No sharp edges here. The cap unscrews with one, about one and three quarter turns to reveal a concave section of the same gorgeous galaxy blue acrylic and a chrome number six size steel nib in the standard pen bbs fine mini food aid nib with that slight upturn at the tip in the waverly style let's take a closer look at this nib it has the typical pen bbs markings with a filigreed double line border and the words pen bbs since 2005 f for fine and china engravings and here is the plastic feed and there's plenty of cap clearance on the 492 and the 487 you can see it here in the 492 because it's clear that's at least five millimeters of space there the barrel unscrews from the section has a silicone ring on it right there this access allows you to get at that uh, magnetic piston and get it out or give it a push if it is stuck the cap posts not deeply but but securely but it becomes ridiculously long at 170 millimeters plus the magnet at the back of the cap really back weights this pen i have to write with this pen unposted the pen is incredibly comfortable in the hand unposted let's just say they are really built for comfort satisfy our soul because i'm the fuck comfort I'm not built for speed. Other than the lack of a cap band, here is the only other significant difference between the 492 and the 487. You can see the threads here are much smaller and there's fewer of them. The section is a little bit longer, has the same shape, but it's a lot smoother through here. It's a subtle difference. On the section but you can really feel it of course if this were an eyedropper or a converter pen it would already be terrific but this pen has the newfangled magnetic piston filling mechanism let's see what's another word for newfangled how about gimmicky i know alan has used the word gimmicky in his review and i think that might be a topic for our conversation about this filling system later on on first use like a lot of piston pens the piston needs a bit of a push and usually more grease once the piston moves freely, it is possible to move it with the magnet. The instructions actually have a little tip about that. Notice that the plunger may be stuck because it had not been used for a long time. And turning around the plunger can solve this problem after the first step. So what they mean is, and I'll use the 492 as an example, this piston, if it gets stuck because it hasn't been used in a while, you just rotate the barrel and you notice that the the magnet goes with it this is a good tip and chris rap 52 first discovered that with the 492 and long then included that with the instructions and that's good another thing i've discovered which is not in the instructions is to remove the end plug if you remove this end plug it frees up the air to move with the piston but with the plug in and i moved the piston the piston moved back up again because there was pressure built up involved. So I removed that end plug and the piston moves relatively easily. With a solid finish like the Galaxy, that end plug, you wouldn't know that that is unscrewable. There, now the plug's out. That you dip the pen in the ink and you draw up the ink, just like that. and you get a relatively full fill so that hole to there is about an inch and a half or so so if you have a, a very low amount of ink then this is very difficult to do so even the most diehard pen geeks like me give up an eyedropper this damn thing i'm seriously considering taking the magnet out of this pen with my 492 i tried taking the magnet out and eyedropper fillering it silicone grease on those threads and filled it up and i got a lot of ink in it uh, but it leaked i might just take the magnet out use some cyanoacrylate glue 
glue that down permanently because with the piston in I'm getting 3.7 milliliters of ink without the piston in I'm getting about 4.2 milliliters of ink that's a lot of ink so if this were an eyedropper with a large capacity that would be a terrific pen although you'd miss out on the fun of this magnetic filler being a pain in the ass <coughs> now that I have ink in the pen let's do some size comparisons and I'll show the measurements before I come back with a writing sample okay here we are with the 487 and here is its parent the 492 and since they're identical to each other and they don't like each other or they do like each other uh, I'm gonna keep them separate so instead let's look at it with a moon man m800 galaxy a pen bbs 480 galaxy a pen bbs 500 galaxy and a pen bbs 355 improved version galaxy now do we see a theme here at all so here they are posted and the one thing you might notice is that even though this is a moon man it has a pen bbs fine nib they all have the pen bbs fine nibs in them so let's look at the measurements and i'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing sample portion of the review this is clairefontaine 90 gsm paper and this is the pen bbs 487 and it has a fine waverly dib steel and the ink today is pilot Hiroshizuku Konpeki and here is the swatch card for the Konpeki and this is Diamine Asa Blue and Robert Oster Blue Water Ice let's check the wetness this is decently wet relatively for a pen bbs nib there's very little line variation to be had out of these nibs there's a no pressure line there's some pressure there's not any variation uh, they're stiff so don't expect that through pressure the line has some character it's subtle but it's there and our writing sample today And we're some reverse writing. It actually doesn't do too badly. It's very, very thin and very, very dry. And some quick writing. keeping up very very nicely indeed so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen if you followed my channel at all you'll know I'm a big fan of pen BBS this company is a collection of fountain pen lovers they get together and discuss their love of the writing instrument and share ideas about their design and construction they also have what I think is the greatest selection of acrylic resins from any pen manufacturer yes I said it and I'm totally aware of the incredible acrylics coming out of Leonardo the range and beauty of these finishes is just unsurpassed in my view and for the price it's just unbelievable this galaxy finish on the 487 was $42.99 shipping included I mean get out of town look at the quality of this 
for less than 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? I say all of that to put my criticisms of this pen into perspective. This is a gorgeous fountain pen for the money. I love the feel of this pen in my hand, unposted. It has a huge ink capacity and a totally cool conversation starter filling system that will make you the envy of every ink stained pocket protector wearing basement dwelling geek on your street. But there are some drawbacks. This filling system might be neat, but it is a total pain. I'm seriously thinking of tossing the magnet and sealing the end plug on this pen. The filling system is a gimmick. Currently, the way it functions, it isn't very practical for the average user. That is the only problem I have with this pen. Other than that, I think it's an upgrade to the 492, which still feels to me to be a little over the top design wise. This 487 is much more understated and elegant. I love the lack of a cap band and the almost hidden model numbers and branding. Good for you, Long and team. I'd like to see the 352 go away and be replaced by this very pen with the magnets removed and a converter added. I'd pay the same price for it. And there you have it. Now I will cut to my conversation with Alan Light of What I Ink, but not before I've asked you to please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And on to our Zoom meeting. And we're back with our discussion. Uh, but we're going to talk about a couple of subjects. We're going to talk about 487. We're going to compare it with it, the 492 limited edition um, magnetic piston filler. Um, and then we're going to speculate on some future things about MBDS. So do you want to go ahead with your ideas on, because you brought up the word first, gimmick. Yeah. So, yes, it is absolutely a gimmick. There's no doubt about it. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Gimmicks right. have, have their place. Um, the other thing, way, thing I would describe it is it's purely an enthusiast's pen. There's really only two types of people who would even really think about buying and using this pen. One is diehard fountain pen people like we are, where just the fact that it's a cool, interesting, and somewhat unique filling mechanism makes it uh, attractive in and of itself. And the fact that it's not the easiest to use is, is secondary. The other people are people who are really obsessed with magnets uh, and there are people like that i mean there are lots of people that are all into sort of magnetic toys and all sorts of magnetic ga magnetic gadget fans i guess would be a category and those sort of people would be really really interested in this beyond that i i just can't see even even a slightly more than casual fountain pen user would not be interested in this pen at all. It, the filling mechanism is just too twitchy. It's just too much work. I mean, it really is. I mean, I just just to, to, to make it work. Yeah, and I agree. Actually, in my review, you haven't seen it yet. I had a lot of trouble. I was I tried to demonstrate using my 492 because the Galaxy isn't see-through, and this wow. this thing stuck. My 492 uh -huh. stuck like crazy. I ended up getting ink all over myself. I ended up being frustrated. And then I said, yeah. okay, well, I'll try with this. And it was slightly better, but still I thought, what a pain. Um, yeah. And the good thing is that you, because it takes so much ink, you don't have to do it that, that many yeah. times. Yeah. But uh, the problem is that you leave it sit, that piston sit there for a while and it sticks. Yeah. And so um, I've been suggesting that a good solution might be to take the piston out, uh, but glue it down mm. with crazy glue and make this thing an eyedropper pen, just permanent. Or pen B BBS should just make an eyedropper version. Is that well, and that, and that <laughs> was a suggestion as well, because I like this pen. I mean, the gas. Yeah, let's, okay. let's talk let's about, talk about what we like. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about that for a minute. So I called this, when I first saw the pictures of it, I called it pen BBS unplugged, which is really kind of what you're getting here. This is Highly stripped down. There isn't even a, a clip band. There's no. The, the only pieces of furniture on the entire pen are this little uh, medallion on the end, and then the clip itself. That's yeah, it. That's it. It's a very, very minimalistic pen, which is nice. The imprint is nice, yes. and I really like that. And it's sort of throwbacky. And I yeah. wish more pens would actually do that because that was kind of a cool thing a hundred years ago. Every pen had an imprint. And I, I kind of like that as well. That heat stamp of that medallion 
uh, 487 on the back. Um, I mentioned in my review that I thought this was really good of a Chinese designer because uh, Chinese design, like Italian design, is sometimes very over the top and very <laughs> ornate and a bit much. And I found... You mean like the, you mean like the, you mean like the 492? <laughs> like the, exactly. That's why I got this one up here. But it's a bit much. And I, the more I used this pen, the more I thought, eh, I don't really like that pen. And then this yeah. came along, and I love this pen, especially when... And it doesn't post great, okay? It doesn't post. Yes, it posts. I know you'll argue with me that it does post. Is it, it too, wait, do you find it too heavy or too long? It's or too heavy it? and too long. Okay. So, but in your hand, unposted, this is as comfortable as my 323. I'm thinking because I want to use this a lot, I don't want to fight with that filler. I'm going to take the gimmick out and make it just an eyedropper. It's kind of a shame. That's like the, the marquee thing about this pen is the filling mechanism. One of the things I focused on was look at the, the workmanship on that seam. They rolled that edge. And they rolled that edge together yeah. so that there's it's seamless. It's just like butter. you know that's actually a really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but that is actually the manufacturing tolerances on that are actually quite nice. Yeah, yeah. That I, I hadn't that hadn't actually occurred to me. That's really nice. I think I mentioned this on the last one. They're just starting to bore me a little bit. I think they need to come up with a more, a more exciting clip design, and I think they need to come out with some more interesting nibs. And that yeah. might lead into another topic of discussion, but I did want to speculate because I speculated last time. I would like to see Pen BBS take this and replace the 352 with this pen. Take the magnet out of this, uh, take the end plug out of it, and make it an, mm -hmm. an eyedropper pen converter pen, just like this. The 352 flat top, I haven't got one, but it, it looks boring to me. But this is a very nicely engineered, sleek, beautiful pen. If I wanted an eyedropper pen BBS pen, to be honest, that's not what I would pick as a design basis would be the 500. Yeah, right. As much as I it's love bigger. the filling mechanism on the 500, yeah. I just think this as an eyedropper would be kill. It's but, ridiculously yeah. long. You can, conduct <laughs> an you can conduct an orchestra with that. Yeah. Maybe what they should do is fix the design of this a little bit. Make that, yeah. that like taper on the end. They should yep. make it so it, goes, so it goes all the way in. They should like have that. done that originally. In yeah. Design. So yeah. if they fix that, make this an eyedropper pen. This is this is the pen BBS design I would want to see in an, if they were going to do an eyedropper on it. It would be the 500. I think that was a terrific discussion, Alan. Thank you very much for, welcome, for participating in this again. I'd like to thank everybody for watching and remind you to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that button to get instant notifications and also comment. Yeah, thanks everybody. And don't forget, check out the uh, video on Doug's channel. Again, the link will be in the notes below. And again, thanks, uh, thanks for joining. Good to see you later. Thank you, Alan. We'll see all of you later and uh, your video will be linked in my description as well. So thank you all for watching, and it's good night for me, and it's good night for him. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I made this.